Greetings all, this is Wrath here, and I'm here to show you my pick collection. Thank you for tuning into the channel. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I've uh, been collecting for quite a while now. I'm still going, but I wanted to go ahead and show a few friends and anybody else who may be interested what all I've got. Let's go ahead and get to it. So first to start off with, this is how I store them. I need to get some more of these, but generally I just keep these individually in their own little slots in these little tackle boxes. Uh, this is my main box. These are the picks I use the most often. And then these are, of course, the rest of them here. Um, you can get these anywhere from like Walmart to Dollar Store or whatever. I plan on getting another one of these because, as you can see, these are kind of getting full. But uh, in total, I have 503 picks, as long as I didn't miscount. And uh, I have 125 unique models, I guess you could call it. And uh, for the unique picks, I keep them all in this little binder here with these pages and I'll go through each individual one and show you in detail and give a few brief thoughts of them. Here's the binder with all the uh, unique picks. Uh, first up I wanted to mention I'm using this piece of printer paper just to make it a little bit easier to see and what I like what I try to do is I try to my best to organize these as far as what type they are, thickness, material, that kind of thing and keep all those together. So uh, first up we have all the artist signature picks here. Um, some of them may not necessarily be signature picks, they may just be tributes, things like that. And at the end of the video, I'll also be showing high resolution images of each page here. Alright, so uh, the first little section here are Santana picks. Carlos Santana, awesome guitarist. You see there's six of these right here. And then you can barely see it, but it's a uh, Meshuggah pick right here, uh, Frederick's pick. And that's... Uh, I believe nylon. I can't remember what thickness it is, but uh, this is extremely grippy. This is almost so grippy it feels like sandpaper, um, but it sounds pretty good, especially on baritone instruments. Now this one here is a uh, pick from a Camelot show that we got. Um, Sean threw it into the crowd. The wife caught it, so we, we kept it, and I put it as part of the collection here. Then you got James Hetfield from Metallica. This is a really great pick. It's got that prime tone grip. I'm not sure you can see that, but it's uh, 1.14 millimeters. Sounds great. Great attack. Feels great in the hand. Easy to see if you drop it. You got Kirk Hammett's pick, which is kind of cool, but not really my style. It's just, I don't know, it feels awkward playing it. Then you got some good old sound garden here. It's got one right there. These are made by, uh, made by Perry's. So they're kind of, the way they're made, they're kind of generic. But uh, I wanted them because I love Chris Cornell. I love Soundgarden. So there's those. Okay. And then we have uh, Nick Johnston's pick right here. Tortex pick. I can't remember the thickness. Let me see. doesn't say what the thickness is, but uh, <clears throat> awesome guitar player. We got a couple Jason Becker tributes. Got to love Jason Becker. Uh, we have uh, John Petrucci's latest Trinity series pick here. You can see that. Apologize for the not so great lighting. Then you got some more generic tribute type picks. You got Pink Floyd here. Also made by Perry's. You have a in tune guitar pick for uh, Keith Marrow. You got another uh, John Petrucci Jazz 3. This is an older model, but I like the way these were designed. I have the Andy James and John Petrucci flow picks. These are both two mil. Uh, main difference is one just has a larger surface area than the other. But uh, I swear by these picks. These things are great. Um, I don't use them as often anymore, but if you uh, want a really, really smooth attack, definitely these. You got a lot of control with them. And here I'll show you the back of them. So for the Camelot pick, there's the back of that, made by Intune. Frederick Thornton's uh, looks identical on the back. Here's the Santana picks. All look pretty much the same. Here's Jason Becker's. Dang, where's my pick? And then a signature. It's pretty cool. Uh, you have uh, Nick Johnston's right there. The uh, Soundgarden and Pink Floyd picks all just have that Perry's logo. Trinity pick, I believe, looks... The, no, it says Jim Dunlop on the back. John Petrucci's looks the same on the back. Keith Merrow. Then Andy James, John Petrucci, flow picks down here. Next page, you have some more artist picks. Joe Satriani, 
these are mostly tribute picks, but he sketched these for these picks. I believe, I want to say D'Addario makes these. Either D'Addario or D'Andre, whatever it's called. Um, let's see, here's each one there. Pretty quirky looking. They don't feel too bad in the hands. I haven't actually tested them playing yet. Here's the uh, new Matt Hafey signature Dunlop pick, Max Grip Jazz 3. I believe that's a uh, nylon material, hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1.38 millimeter. You have a uh, 1.14 Tortex from Ola England. And here's the back of those. So the John Petrucci picks, these are the heavy ones and pretty much look the same on the back. Got a signature. Did I say Petrucci? I mean Cetriani. Yeah, Joe Cetriani. And then we have Matt Hafey's on the back. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but... Again, I'll show higher resolution shots when we're done. The Ole England signature right there. Here are the more mass-produced or non-artist signature type stuff. Quite a variety of things here. Let's go ahead and get through them. Uh, first, we have the Tortex material stuff. We have some Moltex here, too. So you have your classic Tortex 0.88 mil, which everybody and their grandma uses. Uh, I'm actually not a fan of this pick. It's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Then we have a 1 mil Tortex. Uh, let's see, 1.14 mil, got your Gator Grips, 9.6 mil, 1.14. And then these are the uh, Tortex Jazz 3s, I believe. Yeah, I want to say those are the Jazz 3s. Tortex, 0.88 mil right here. 1, uh, one mil, 1.14. You got your 1.5 mil Jazz 3 XL. This is a uh, Max Grip Delrin pick. Delrin 500 Max Grip. This is a 1.5 mil right here. A pretty good pick. It's uh, it's got a gloss finish, although it has that prime tone uh, grip right there, which is pretty cool. 0.73 mil Dunlop Flow pick, and then we have a 0.88 mil. We got a 1.0. We have a uh, 1.14, 1.5. So going down, we have a uh, 2.0 mil. Again, that's another flow. This is just a prime tone 1.5. Going back to the Tortex stuff, still in the Flow series, we have the 1.14 mil, 1.35 mil, 1.5 mil, and uh, this one especially, this is basically one of my all-around favorite picks. It's just a great happy medium. Um, it's got a nice bevel, but still a snappy attack. It does, once it wears down, it does dull a little bit, but it still feels great in the hand. Just the overall shape of it, it just works for me. Great for pretty much any style of music, whether you're playing lead or rhythm or jazz, metal, whatever. Okay, we have the normal Jazz 3 Tortexes. We have a uh, 1.0, 1.14. Uh, this I actually got because of all the England picks. I didn't want to wear out his signature, so I got the generic version. These are cool picks, too. Very accurate, of course, because they're Jazz 3s. Uh, you have your Tortex Flex series. You got the 1.0 mil. You got 1.14. Don't really care for these. They just sound dull to me. I haven't tried it yet, but this is a, a big stubby. Can't remember the material. I want to say it's acrylic, but I could be wrong. Seemed to feel pretty good though. But uh, here's the uh, Clayton picks. I just got a couple here. There's the Clayton Spike 80 mil. Um, didn't care for this. It's like a Jazz 3, but it's just, it's too small for me. Here is the Ultim. I think that's a one mil, but I'm not positive. But uh, Ultim Clayton pick. Didn't care for it. Um, the edges are just way too jagged, so they're really scratchy when you uh, when you pick. Some people prefer that, but I don't. I don't mind a little bit of scratch on the wound strings, but this is just too much. Here are the Altex Jazz 3XL picks right here. 1.38 mil. These are pretty cool. I, I like those a lot. These used to be my main pick. I still like them. Uh, the Altex Sharp Dunlops. Got your piss-colored Altex. 2.0. Then I'll show you the backs of each of these. Nothing too crazy. But, uh, so you got your Jazz 3s. Those look about identical. You got your Jazz 3s. All right, next page, we have some that go a little bit beyond Dunlop, which is pretty cool. Starting off, we have the Dava picks. These are the control gel picks, is what they call them. I believe they're just acrylic. I think they may be the same thickness. I'm not positive. But, uh, so you have your gel picks by Dava there. Very nice. Sound good, too. They remind me of gravity picks only. Dava. 
then you have the normal traditional control pick here those uh, teal blue ones these are great for strumming and really just about anything that's another one of my favorite all-around picks because you can use it for anything and uh, they're especially good for blues type stuff like SRV that kind of thing you have your uh, grippy diva picks right there not really a fan of them I just don't care for the sound of them and I don't like the idea of that uh, rubber material eventually wearing off like if you uh, dig too far deep in the string there but they're still cool to have then you have some more dava picks got a metal tipped dava pick right there it's got that control grip then you have a normal Delrin one you have your Fender Jazz 3 style picks uh, with a celluloid then they, they have a uh, bevel on them too you have your typical Fender celluloid picks right there thin and medium Dunlop Everlast. I love this series. They're basically, uh, they're Delrin, but with a matte finish. They're not super sticky or glossy or anything. And this uh, logo here is actually textured. It kind of gives you a grip, sort of like the Tortex stuff does, but even more so. And the way these things are beveled, the way the attack is and the release, whenever you're picking, whether it's strumming or chugging or what have you, these are just excellent. Doesn't matter what thickness you choose these are just awesome these are some of my new main flavors of the week basically but i've been using them for a few months now uh my uh favorite ones out of these overall are probably these two the uh the 1.14 and the uh, 1.5 especially 1.5 if we're playing something fast and accurate these are the new overpriced prodigy ernie ball picks this is a uh, 1.5 mil i'm not a fan of these uh, the idea is cool but at least this particular one, I just, I couldn't do it. I can't pick worth a damn with it. We have some more Delrin picks from this company called Hot Grips. These remind me of those, uh, what are they called, Duragrip picks by, uh, I believe, Planet Waves. Similar type thing here. These are really cool. I, I like them. They sound decent. Feel good in the hand. This is a 3D printed pick my brother gave me. It's a dick pick, as you can see. These are the uh, Snarling Dogs Brain picks. This is nylon uh, 1.14 mil. These are also excellent for strumming. Anything that's acoustic or, uh, you know, just chord heavy, they're great. Uh, leaves are okay, too. You know, riffing stuff like with Rocker, okay, too. But these really excel the way they, uh, the way they re release. These really excel with anything chord related. Have some more Delrin right here. These are the uh, traditional ones from Dunlop. You got 1.14, 1.5, both the glossy finish. I got these because I liked those Jason Becker picks, but I didn't want to wreck those, so I got these instead, you know, if I ever decide to play with them. Uh, you have your uh, Dunlop Nylon Max Grip 1.14. As you can see, you're seeing a pattern here. I love that gauge. It's just a good, happy medium. Another Max Grip right here. I want to say, let's see, that's a Jazz 3. I want to say that's a Nylon and 1.38 mil. Same thing with this, just a different color. And then the back of this. They all look about identical. The Fender logo is missing on that side. Let's see. And then for the Hot Grips picks, you got a uh, textured back on that side. It's a little bit different on this side, so it's kind of cool. Last page, we're getting to a little bit of the more unique stuff. Some Swiss picks here, gravity picks. And we'll go ahead and get started. So you have uh, the acrylic gravity picks. These always sound and play great. Uh, you have a Jazz 3XL style right here. 003. Uh, you have a Sunrise 1.5. I love that pick. That's also one of my main main favorites there. And it's got that same shape as like one of the flow picks. So I really love the feel of it in my hand. You have a, uh, a shiny beveled uh, classic big mini 2 mil. As you can see it's a little bit smaller. Still feels good. I got a classic standard. This is with a uh, matte bevel right there. You have a V pick. These are cool. I think this is a three mil, if I'm not mistaken. Three or three and a half, something like that. Then you have uh, the Swiss picks. These feel awesome. They sound great too. And the owner, I think his name is Russell. Correct me if I'm wrong, but really cool guy. Great customer service. And, you know, I'll always support these guys. They're just awesome. But uh, so here's the Rusty Coley signatures. These are like the Atomic Cheddar ones. This is a. Uh, 0.9 mil Jazz 3 standard shape, and this is a uh, 1.10 mil or 1.1 mil, sorry, standard shape. This is a Atomic Cheddar Sharp, as you can see. I've worn it out just a little bit. 
sharp cheddar right here. That's a 1.10 mil. These glow in the dark. Same exact thing. These are all the same material. 1.10 mil for all these. This is a Jason Becker tribute right here. They call it blue cheese. This is, uh, I want to say, I want to say that's atomic cheddar. I don't know. I, I don't remember. Sorry. Moving along. We have some DR picks. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I've got so many of these. Number one, I actually got curious because I really like Delrin picks, I, and they all feel totally different. So I like experimenting, of course, if it wasn't obvious. And uh, I saw another guy's YouTube video. He started. He had a massive pick collection. It was awesome. And he started talking about how he ended up using these as his main pick. And I'm like, really? A generic string manufacturer pick? Okay. So I got curious, and I got them. And the first one I tried was their uh, heavier one. It's a one mil. Not too heavy, but, you know, good happy medium. And it felt great. It sounded great. Loved them. And the other reason is I love DR strings to begin with anyway. That's basically my main string brand. So I decided to go ahead and get the rest. Um, another reason, too, is I could not find these anywhere except for stringsandbeyond.com. So I figured, hell, if they quit making them, I've got a stockpile. So uh, here we go. These are uh, the Delrin picks we have. Uh, 0.5 mil, 0.73, 1.0. This is just a generic pick that actually came with a Game Boy repair kit. Thin uh, uh, strings and beyond pick right there. Back to the DRs, we have the thin, medium, heavy for the celluloid or tor tortoise, whatever. I haven't tried those, not yet at least. Uh, you have the thin, medium, heavy for the perloid picks right there. Then you have the Daddario uh, Black Ice Pick. This is also Delrin, I believe. 1.5 mil, and I'm excited to try that. I haven't tried it yet, but you can see it's a Jazz 3 shape. Here's the back of these. Nothing too exciting. Okay, and that's about the only difference for the uh, Daddario Pick right there. And lastly, but not least, definitely not least, this is a pick made out of a coin or a token. And as you can see, it's Space Ghost. Me and the wife went to a uh, state fair. And the guy from uh, Coin Guitar Picks or Coin Picks, something like that, I can't remember the, the exact name of the brand, he had a bunch of these laying out. And when I saw the Space Ghost one, I'm a 90s kid, I could not resist. This bitch was like $55, but I don't care. I had to have it. And uh, believe it or not, even though it's a coin pick, it sounds amazing. I don't use it very often only because the thing's expensive. I don't want to wear out the uh, finish on this. So I just keep it right here as one of my multiple prize possessions there. And uh, here's the back. I do want to eventually get another coin pick just to actually, you know, to actually play with um, because they sound very bright. And it's, it's just a cool, uh, cool difference that it makes. But um, they sound very bright. I was going to get some more, but they are not cheap. I was actually going to get two or three, but the guy quoted me like $130, and I'm not spending that much on picks. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this, and now here are the high-res shots. So that's my collection here. Hope you enjoyed watching and you can expect to see more in a few months because I am constantly looking for picks. I just love collecting them. It's a fun hobby. It's not too expensive most of the time and there's always something unique about every single one of them. Plus I'm anal retentive when it comes to my guitar sound so I just love experimenting with them. Different thicknesses, everything like that. Um, so feel free to leave a comment below and until next time, rock on.